Damn Mason, Ezra made both your hole and face pulsate. So last time we talked, Autumn Volkov, the heir of my legacy challenge, was confronted by her twin brother, Ezra Volkov, about her addiction, before getting physical with him and exposed her pharmacist, Mason Meshram, forever ruining his friendship with Ezra. The twins headed home, their family waiting patiently for their arrival. I swear, the older Alexis gets, the grumpier she gets. Autumn sat patiently in the living room as Ezra talked to their parents, awaiting her inevitable inevitable fate. They greeted Ezra with a hug, told him they had missed him and his sister, and wanted to know all the details about the trip, but Ezra cut them off. That can wait until later. He wasn't going to straight up tell them Autumn's an addict. He was going to trust her just one last time to do the right thing and tell them herself. He simply told them that she is dealing with something serious, and that they needed to ask her about it right now. Alexis called Autumn over with a smile and a hug, confronting her daughter. And finally, Autumn was honest with her mum and herself. She's been doing medications for a long time. She's an addict and didn't know if she would ever be able to be sober. The embarrassment made her want to bury herself alive. But Alexis wasn't mad nor condescending. She was worried and was just glad Autumn was honest with her. Alexis told Autumn she was there for her, that she loves her, and she will do anything in her power to help Autumn get sober. And that meant that if Autumn wanted to continue living under her roof. Rehab was a must, and she would be leaving for it today. Look at my little disappointments grades. You've actually grown on me Ezra. I bet Edward will never relate. In other news, today also happens to be Clint's birthday. He is finally aging up to a teen. Thank goodness, the sooner he ages up, the sooner he's out of this house. Christopher got started baking him a cake, shockingly enough, in the kitchen. Never would have thought. All right, Clinteris, time to blow out the candles. He was given the additional kind trait and the fabulously wealthy aspiration. Let's see what he looks like. Oh wow, rocking that purple mullet, Clint, but it doesn't really feel like it fits him. The Bursons were a polished Windenberg family, so I tried to emulate a combination of that and the Moonwood Mill aesthetic, and I feel like I did a decent job. Hope you enjoyed your 15 minutes, Clint, because I will probably forget about your existence entirely after this. The day was coming to an end, and before leaving for rehab tonight, Autumn needed to take care of something. She paid a visit to her soon to be ex girlfriend, Addison Chopra, in San Michuno. It was time to come clean to Addison about everything. She first started with her almost dying and having to get emergency surgery. Then, she talked about Jacob dying from the same thing she almost died from. She hadn't told anyone, not even Shanna, about any of this. And it was still hard for her to talk about. Addison felt so sorry for Autumn, comforting her and apologizing for her loss. Addison is such a good sim, and that's why Autumn knew she would forever feel guilty about what she was going to do next. She let it spill out, confessing her infidelity with Shanna. Addison, completely enraged, instantly broke up with her. Or, Autumn broke up with her. Perhaps it was a mutual decision. Autumn begged for Addison's forgiveness, but she didn't want to hear it. Rightfully so, she was devastated. How could Autumn do this to her? After everything, had their relationship meant nothing? It did mean something to Autumn. Addison was still her best friend, and she had so much love in her heart for her, and she didn't want their friendship to end, especially like this. But the truth is that they should have never been romantically involved. Their relationship should have stayed platonic, and Autumn would always regret letting it go as far as it did. She didn't want to lose Addison, but she wasn't going to tell her that. She had no right. She broke Addison's heart, ruined her trust. She watched Addison walk away with tears streaming down her face, hoping that one day, Addison will be able to forgive her. Before heading to rehab, she stopped at one more place, Jacob's grave in Glimmerbrook. Oh, the butterfly effect. The destructive path Autumn took all began with Jacob. She lost her big brother, the man who helped raise her, the man she talked to when she couldn't talk to anyone else. It wasn't fair. She was able to live her life. Why wasn't Jacob? He was barely an adult when he died. He had so much to live for. And yet, he's the one that's six feet under. Autumn had suffered enough for ten lifetimes. She had lived more than Jacob did. 
Why him? Why not her? She missed Jacob so much. She just wished she could talk to him and know if he was okay wherever he is. And again, it was like some divine spirit heard her thoughts because soon after, Oh my god, it's Jacob, my favorite Volkov. At first, Autumn thought she was hallucinating. Maybe the leftover Coca-Cola in her system was making her see things. But when she heard Jacob's voice, she knew he was real. She had missed him so much, she wanted to know everything there was to know about his death about his afterlife, and if he was okay. Jacob said death was peaceful and over before he knew it. He knew it was coming once his illness came back. He was okay, but he had been watching over the whole family, witnessing her self-destruct firsthand. She couldn't help it. His death caused her too much pain. It felt like happiness became unattainable without adult juice and medications. She felt like her family was broken. He may be alright in the afterlife, but the afterlife can wait it comes for all of us but life is short and you only get to live it once and she wanted jacob to live it and with that autumn made a promise to jacob she didn't know how the hell she was going to be able to do it or if she could even do it but autumn promised to jacob that she was going to figure out a way to bring him back to life and give him another shot at the life he deserved they hugged and said their goodbyes autumn promising to visit him again soon but right now, she had somewhere she needed to be. Autumn finally returned to Moonwood Mill, her whole family outside waiting for her, thinking she went out on a bender. But no, she was back, and sober, and ready to stay that way. She was going to stay sober for Shanna, for Ezra, for Alexis and Chris, for Jacob, and finally, for herself. Her family wished her the best of luck, and with that, she began the next chapter of her life, anxious to recover and get on with bringing her brother back to life and back home to Moonwood Mill.